I'm looking for the place where to put the hide. There. There's an open field over there. And there's a river. A small, small creek running through it. have moved behind me <laughs> or just above me but none of them are going in front of me in front of there so I found the first bird it's like a joke, it's a very teeny tiny bird, but at least it was in front of me, in one of the trees, and I spotted it with binoculars. Although I start seeing more and more birds flying over the sky in front of me, so I hope that some of them will come a bit closer.
after spending two, three, almost three hours in the hide, I decided to move out and just to go for a walk in the forest. So in these fields that I am currently am, I'll just drop my bag, the big bag, into the car and with a lighter kit I'll just go around and have a debrief for myself what I've learned today and also have a nice cup of coffee and a brownie. And hopefully I'll still see some birds or even animals, which I suspect uh, could be here because there are lots of uh, tracks in, in the mud. No clue what bird that I have just photographed. <laughs> That's what I will be doing for the rest of the day. Checking the pictures and the atlas and trying to understand what I saw today. I feel like being back in the military. Although right away I see <laughs> where I got rusty. I'm not slow enough, that's one for sure. Not cautious enough. And a little bit too loud. Now I'm back at my car and it's time for a debrief. So how today went? I think it was nice. Uh, my pure intention was to try the blind that I made from my old tent. Uh, this is the very first tent that I ever got and I got it when I was six or seven years old. So it's 23 years old right now. So I spray painted it uh, uh, with a uh, silhouette of the branch and it worked nicely I think it looks good <laughs> also with nettings with lots of camouflage nets in different places it looks really good and it camouflages me well at least that's how I think about it uh, it is a very small tent it suits uh, I don't think that I could fit in it uh, anymore especially with a backpack so it's not that cozy and not that uh, well spacious to be inside but for the purpose it is very good because right now it was placed in a swampy place so I found a very small rectangle well not even a rectangle I think but a very small place which was not that wet and I could place it so if I had a bigger blind I couldn't do that so I think the benefit of the small thing still prevails uh, also I didn't have to carry a big thing so that's also a bonus uh, I don't know about other blinds because I have never been in the one, but uh, you know, this one was a little bit noisy. Mm, well, that plastic fabric, uh, it was a little bit noisy. Uh, I don't think that I spooked anything because I don't think that there was anything around. But uh, maybe I didn't see anything because I spooked <laughs> everything. Nevertheless, it was uh, a very good solution, at least for me as a beginner, without having to invest a lot. So I placed my tripod in and I spent around three hours inside the blind. And uh, during that time, uh, gladly, uh, the blind covered me from the wind. So I didn't got very cold, but uh, uh, as I would have been if I was, well, in the open air. But eventually I got a little bit cold, uh, feet became a little bit numb. So that's a thing to think about for the next time. Also, the blind looked small because there were lots of random stuff lying in it I think and um, the main reason for that is that I don't have a big backpack yet 
I will be ordering one soon. Um, I just finished my hiking career at some point and I gave away some of my backpacks and some of my stuff. So the only thing that I had was this backpack with which I was, uh, well, I had a small uh, backpack, a tactical one and a bigger one. So next time I should be heading out with a big tactical backpack and uh, everything should fit nicely into one bag and it will be much more comfortable. The other thing I noticed uh, about the comfort is that I lost my shape <laughs> over the time. Not only in the military sense, like being quiet, slow, I'm way too fast still and way too noisy and uh, way too eager to find animals. So uh, I lost some of the skill and of the shape, some of the shape, but also I lost the physical shape. So walking with a backpack should be a very good uh, solution to that. And I should be training with that, uh, with some weights inside. I used to do that uh, at some point in my life and it worked really nicely. And I think that I will be doing that again. And I want to do that uh, so that I am not injured when I'm walking, hiking with the backpack and the camera. So the big backpack should solve all the random stuff lying in the, in the hide and uh, it should make it uh, more comfortable. And I will also be able to bring more stuff. <laughs> when you have more space, you will always bring more stuff. Uh, what else? Uh, I didn't see any special species, I think. Uh, I photographed a few birds, a few small and a few big ones. Uh, by the end of uh, hiking around uh, this field, uh, when I thought that I'll just check around what's happening and how everything looks like. Uh, small birds started landing not that far away from me, so I have a very a few nice uh, close-ups. Uh, but uh, other than that, all of the shots were made with the birds in, in the distance, so I will have a good time today trying to find uh, in the atlas what did I photographed. So it will be a learning afternoon for me. And right now, this is. Uh, I also met a photographer, by the way, uh, at one uh, in, 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 uh, at one point, and he told me where the moose, I think, is living in these areas. So when I get my backpack, I'll try a more mobile uh, scouting session, uh, walking through the fields and checking what's happening over there. Because frankly, I feel like back in the military when you are walking cautiously, uh, <laughs> leaning into the tree and just uh, doing your shots firmly. So staying cautious, staying low and staying silent in the nature, that's what uh, the military was full of. So I feel like back in the military and in a way being invisible a little bit is a very interesting feeling. It's also a responsibility, especially in the springtime uh, when uh, the nature is, well, uh, making babies <laughs> and when you spook somebody so they can be left alone and it's not a good thing so you have to always be cautious and especially when you are well camouflaged not like me today but when you are well camouflaged you can get very close to the animal and if, if you spook him he might just leave the place uh, and never come back and he might even leave his youngest or he may attack by for defending the youngest Okay, I think it's time to go home. Uh, it was a very nice afternoon in a very random place that I just picked through the Google Maps. And uh, I'm already planning a few scouting trips to see where the trail is leading, what is happening in, in, uh, on the banks of the rivers, on the small creeks. And because when I, was used, when I used to fish uh, trout, uh, I would see lots of interesting birds that I have never seen and I have never seen anywhere else. So I think that I should be heading to the rivers where I used to be fishing, where I used to fish and uh, to see what's happening over there and maybe even bring my new DIY blind. Okay, thank you for watching. It was an interesting thing to do and also trying to capture myself doing all that stuff is also uh, not a challenge, but it takes some effort. So. <laughs> I adored it actually. It, it, I hope that you will be inspired to go into nature and to explore nature on your own. And uh, especially during these times, nature can be a very good place to be in and to get that stress and, and, and tension out. 
thanks to the all the wiggly surroundings that are over here. See you around.